Mm, now that is interesting. DJI has just announced a Spark. What's even more interesting is that I have one right here to test out. But as you may well know, I appeared in a Mavic campaign bid for DJI. But this is not a paid review. Don't do paid reviews. So this is business as usual. It is 5 a.m. out here. Commitment levels sky high. Stupidity levels equally high. But you know what? It doesn't really matter because I've got this in my pocket. Ooh, my my. Is that a DJI spark in your pocket? Or yes, it's a spark and it's an ickle little thing. The rumors are true. The DJI spark is here. And it's looking pretty damn good. It has a 25mm equiv lens, a bit wider than a Mavic. Aperture f2.6, a bit slower. It shoots 1080p, not 4K. Yes, which the Mavic does do. Comparisons will be made for sure. But bear this in mind, the Spark is going to retail for $499. That's half the price of the Mavic. What a day to be doing a little bit of droning. Talking about Spark, obviously, not my uh, talking. Well, that too. The Mavic marveled with its portability, but the Spark is shaping up to cause a sizable stir. Whereas the former made drones appeal to a larger market, the Spark is aiming for a much broader audience. It's a selfie drone. Just realised I shot a load of stuff back there and the mic was dead, but never mind. But yeah, as I was saying, it would be nice if you could fold the props up. Then it would be truly pocketable. You could put it in the back pocket of your jeans. It would be a little bit of a lump. It would look like you've got hemorrhoids. But it would be cool when you whip your hemorrhoids out. Because you've got this. And the build quality of it is, well, I mean, it uses a lot of plastic. But you need that to keep it light, to make it airborne. You can't have one made of gold. But it's solid plastic. It's good quality plastic. It's fantastically plastic. I mean, size of these things are getting quite redonkulous. Check that out. I mean, I think I've sneezed larger things out of me than that. Asian, we're a phlegmy race. Stupidly, I walked all the way up here and didn't bring my stills camera. Thus, I made do with the DJI Spark camera. Although it kind of makes me look like I'm doing Tai Chi. You can get some decent 12 megapixel images out of it in good daylight. But anyway, it's a drone. Perhaps we should talk about how it works as a drone. The trouble with selfie drones is that they're mostly at a stage where it's more concept than quality, i.e. they're shit. Not particularly good to fly and the video quality, kind of poor. Not stabilised or maybe only digital stabilisation, which is as good as none. DJI Spark 1080p doesn't have 4K, but it's got two axis stabilization. One axis less than a Mavic, but the important thing to bear in mind is that it's mechanical stabilization. You won't get as smooth footage as this with digital stabilization. Just have to be really careful not to step in this poo. Hopefully, sheep poo. You never know, there's lots of photographers who come up here, maybe with a bit of a dicky tummy. They just, you know, ooh. 1080p, yes, but for video, the footage is far superior to anything you can get from any other selfie drone, whatever that means. It definitely means this is being aimed at families and teens, people who haven't necessarily used one before. But hold up, this might be reason why this will be top of a lot of kids' Christmas wish list this year. Not pet dog, besides, this is much easier to wrap, won't suffocate in the wrapping, and you don't need to teach it new tricks because the Spark knows them all. Yes, it does more than go up, down, left, right, plus other similar movements. It has sensors everywhere, which means it um, senses stuff. Right, now I'm gonna show you a neat little trick that you can do with this, but first of all, I'm gonna need protection. Not that kind of protection. Here we go. Now I've been told that I have to show this with the prop guards to prevent me making my 10 fingers into more than 10 fingers. Mind you, if you're born in parts of this country, you're born with more than 10 fingers anyway. Right, let's switch it on first. One thing I must add that it's really quick to start up. 
Press that on, Wi-Fi connection on, DJI Go app. Bish bash bosh, here we are, ready to go. Right, now this is the cool feature that I'm talking about. Press the power button twice, it reads your face, it knows you're in front of the drone. And it takes off itself. There's some kind of dark art shit going on here. You don't really need your phone anymore. I definitely won't be needing my phone anymore because I've just cracked the screen. <laughs> shit. Bum. Okay. And you can land it as well without using the iPhone, which is good because my phone's cracked now. You can also control it with just gestures. Right, so now that's ready. Up. <laughs> this really is better than a pet dog. You can also get it to follow you. There you go. Brilliant. <laughs> Freaky. And now you can take a selfie with it just by doing that. And it works a treat. There's also a panoramic mode and a bokeh mode, believe it or not. Yes, so that is seriously, seriously cool. But the only caveat is that that only works in stills mode. But it's kind of logical because otherwise your video clips will be just of you looking like a shit mime. Mind you, all mimes are shit. There are some smart features for video though that don't involve hand gestures. All it takes is pressing on your subject, on the screen, not physically, that might just anger your subject, and hitting go. It really does make using a drone as easy AF, especially for first timers. But what about for the geekier people like myself? Has it got enough va va voom to satisfy? Absolutely amazing this place. Not a soul in sight. Apart from that old dude doing some meth over there. Old people these days. <sighs> Let's go. The flight time of this park, according to DJI, is 16 minutes versus the 27 minutes of the Mavic. Probably a lot less when you're flying about like this. It doesn't fly as fast or as far as the Mavic either. If you buy the controller which comes out later, you'll get more range than just using the Wi-Fi signal on the phone. And then we'll reach the limit, 50 meters. You know, these virtual sticks aren't doing it for me, really. Virtual stick, stick, I said sticks. All right. But besides, it's gonna have a control in the end and you can use it with goggles. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. You'll look like a spastic robot with your goggles on doing this. But what about the lack of 4K? You know, the 1080p doesn't really concern me. As long as it's a good 1080p and as long as it's nice and smooth, I'll let it go. I like it, the 1080p is pretty good. Even when the light is fading, I can still get some beautiful, stabilized drone footage. It really is all about the size, especially when I'm carrying a C300 II with heavy tripod up some rocks. It's kind of refreshing that Spark fits right in my pocket. It is the ultimate take everywhere, do everything drone, yet it's also the perfect first drone, a taste of what a good drone should give you. It may be half as cheap as the Mavic, but it's certainly not half as fun. But like all miniaturized tech, you'll need to stock up on extra batteries because the fun doesn't seem to last long enough. Right, now all I need is a final hero shot, me alone looking into sunset, no one else. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. like a Swiss army knife. Totally random, but I've just realized that I'm wearing exactly the same pants as I was in the ad. Of course I've washed it since then, especially as I've followed through when I pushed a little bit too hard. Shh, don't tell anybody. 